prepared to carry out the ordinance of baptism. Uh, we're certainly excited. We have a 13-year-old, a man that's going to be baptized, Sister Mayla Hudson. Let's give God praise for her at this time. Amen. going to go ahead and get started with worship. Let's give God praise for this candidate we baptized today. Let's have our social media call to action. Good morning to those all who are watching us this morning. And if you are watching on Facebook, Vimeo, YouTube, or are engaging with our live chat room found on our church website, welcome to St. Paul Online. Our digital ministers and social media influencers are ready to engage along with you this morning. Real quick, we want to invite you to share this experience with others. So if you are watching on Facebook, share to your personal timeline. You can also tag those whom you want to invite within the post. If you are watching on YouTube, subscribe to our channel and then text the link to this worship service to your personal network. And lastly, if you are in the chat room on our church website, click on the invite button in your chat window to share this experience with others. Now let's go ahead and put our hands together as we go forward in our worship experience singing our hymn, Revive Us Again.
For those of you who are watching us online, we would like to know what city and what state you're watching from. So in the chat room, just type in where you're watching us from and so that we can know that you are present with us. This morning, our morning scripture would come from 1 John chapter 2, verses 20 through 27. If you have it in your Bibles, open up with your Bibles, and you can also follow along on the screen. And it says, but you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. I have not written to you because you do not know the truth, but because you know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist, who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. He who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. Therefore, let that abide in you which you have heard from the beginning. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you also will abide in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he has promised us, eternal life. These things I have written to you concerning those who try to deceive you. But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you. And you do not need that anyone teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things and is true, and is not a lie, and just as it has taught you, you will abide in him. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. Let's go to God in prayer this morning. God, we come before you this morning just to say thank you. God, we are so thankful and grateful for another opportunity to come into your house to worship you, God. We're thankful to join in online just to experience your glory just to experience your power and just to lift you up. So God, we lift you up right now because you're so good. God, we give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor because you're so great. And God, we ask that you have your way this morning. God, allow all who are in this building and watching online to feel your presence, God. Move in this place and move in those kitchens, move in those living rooms, God, so that we can know that you are with us, God. We don't have to invite you in because we know that you're already here. So, God, have your way. Have your way through the singing of the songs. God, have your way through the preach word. And God, you'll be glorified. You'll be magnified and you will be exalted among your people. It is your name that we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
I hope you are enjoying this wonderful time for us to be able to sing praises to the God who is worthy of all of our praise this morning. Amen. It's worthy of the name that, that he has been given. He's worthy, guys, to be praised by us this morning. It's so good to be in the house of the Lord with you this morning today. Uh, we're about ready to head into our impact moment, uh, which is the message that uh, I get to have for our children and youth um, here at a part of the church and joining us online. So I want to say welcome to all of you. Um, before I begin, I, I want to mention uh, uh, Mela. I am so proud of you, our sister Mela Hudson, who was baptized uh, this morning. Man, we praise God for awesome decisions like that to walk with the Lord the rest of your life. And I'm very excited for you, Maylin. It's good to see her family as well as Cedric and Matthew here today and all the other families here um, and worship with us. Before I begin, I want to make sure that I mention that I believe, guys, uh, for all of our children and youth and the families that are with us, I want us to be praying for those in Haiti right now. Um, definitely feel a heart for them um, as they have been affected by the earthquake that it was hit um, in, um, in their place, but also to the tropical storms that they will be hit with in the coming days, um, along with other islands off the coast. Let us be in prayer, guys, for, uh, for them, caring for others outside of just the circle and the community that we live in. Amen. Man, as we, as we head into this morning, I'm going to tackle what I think is kind of one of the tougher topics that um, I've had to come across, I guess, as a youth pastor. And uh, we're going to be talking about the fear of God this morning. And so the title of this message for this morning is this for us, guys. When fear is a good thing. When fear is a good thing. Our memory verse comes from the book of Psalms. I'll be um, reading from chapter 34, verse 11 from the New Living Translation version, which says this, come my children and listen to me. I will teach you to fear the Lord. Our bottom line for this morning, guys, are the main point I want us to get from today's message is this, fear of the Lord means loving him more. My question for you this morning is, have you ever swam in the ocean? Have you ever swam in the ocean? It's honestly one of my favorite things to do. When my family and I used to go to the beach with my cousins, I remember how excited we were to jump in, to play in, to swim, and to ride our boogie boards in the ocean waves. I would throw a Nerf football with my dad, and I would remember being tackled by the waves as I, as I catch the ball. It's one of my favorite things to do. And then when my cousins and I were in the waves and those big waves rose up, we'd dive under them into the water to keep cool so we wouldn't get hit by the waves. You see, being in and around the ocean, if you're a lover of the beach like I am, it can be so, so much fun. It's pretty easy to love and to enjoy your time in it. However, the more you think about it, the more you see the ocean, the ocean is actually really, really powerful. When you spend time in and around it, you have to be careful. You have to follow the rules that our parents have set, that the lifeguards have set. You see, my cousins and I would hear our parents tell us not to go too far out into the waves of the ocean because the further we went out, the deeper the ocean gets. And if you're not careful, you could drown. Also, the waves that we see around us as they tumble and rumble and they can be kind of scary, and we need to be careful around them too. All of these things can cause us to be afraid of something that is so wonderful and so beautiful. And they can keep us from seeing the great things about the ocean, making it more dangerous than the wonderful thing that we know it can be. However, what if we let our possible fears about the ocean lead us to respect it and marvel at how beautiful it is? You see, guys, our fears can actually lead us to learning ways to be safe, to follow the rules, and to be more careful about how we navigate the ocean so that we can love and enjoy it. Guys and girls, I believe that the ocean and God are very similar in this way. Just like the ocean, God is powerful and he is mighty. If we believe in and if we obey him, he will be our friend and we will live forever in his love. But if we choose to go our own way and we don't respect, we don't love God, God can quickly become our enemy. Thankfully, if you believe in God, then that he sent Jesus to die for you, then you can let any fear you have about how powerful God is lead you to love him even more. Again, our bottom line, the fear of the Lord 
means loving him more. Man, much of what David writes to us, guys, in Psalm 34 gives us a great look into what we mean when we say that we should fear God as believers. This fear, guys, is more of a deep respect for what God cares about and standing in awe of how awesome he is, how powerful the Lord is. You see, the Lord is the beginning. He is the end. He's the creator of the heavens and the earth and the creator of you and me, so we know that he is worthy of all of our praise. The first part of our psalm for today, guys, in 34.3 says, Come, let us tell of the Lord's greatness. Let us exalt his name together. We can lift up in praise and worship a God who is perfect. He is holy, meaning he has never sinned. He's never messed up, guys. In fact, God hates sin. He hates evil. He hates it so much, guys, that I believe he was willing to come down to earth through Jesus to die on the cross. That's how serious God takes sin. That's how serious God takes evil. Well, next, guys, as we get to know God more and what he cares about, the wiser we will become on how we should live our lives. After our verse of the day, David asked a question about who wants to live a long and a good life. Guys, if we want to live that kind of life, David says in verses 13 and 14, then keep your tongue from speaking evil and your lips from telling lies. Turn away from evil and do good. Search for peace and work to maintain it. Our scripture passage tells us that when we turn away from sin and we seek to do what is right, God will watch over us. He will care for us when we are brokenhearted and he will rescue us and protect us from everything that we face in this life. Even the hard things and the struggles that we face matter all the more when we know that God loves us and that he will bring us through. And then lastly, guys and girls, our fear and our love for God, what well, changes our eternal destination? God is more powerful than anyone or anything. Jesus tells us later on in the gospels that God is the only one that we have to fear because God can control where we spend eternity after life on earth. For all of us who believe in God and have a relationship with his son, Jesus, our home is in heaven when we pass away. But for anyone who chooses not to believe in God and Jesus, they face being separated from God and separated from his awesome love forever. Guys, in verses 21 and 22, David reassures us that everything that is wicked and evil will be destroyed by God, but that the Lord will save those who serve him. No one who believes in him will face punishment. So guys, it's with this, my friends, as we leave here today, I wanna challenge you. Next time you think about God, next time when you see the ocean, think about this. Just like the ocean, God's power and his judgment, it can be kind of scary. But the more that we try to respect and understand God through our fears, the more we will come to love him. Amen. Let's close in prayer. Dear Lord, thank you so, so very much for how awesome and how beautiful you are. God, if we didn't know you, Lord, man, you'd be pretty, you'd be pretty scary because of how powerful and how awesome you are. But God, because we know you, because we understand you, we know, God, that you are on our side, that you will love us and that you will take care of us. God, help us to seek to know you more so that our fear for you can be to respect you and to want to live for you with how we live our lives. God, thank you so much for who you are. Thank you for baptism this morning, for the wonderful things that you do for us. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you all. Can we give God praise for Reverend Peyton C.'s meditation? Thank you so much uh, for that word that you have shared with our young, young people today. I want to, uh, at this time, present to you a new family member to our church. I'm going to ask that Sister Mela Lenise Hudson would come so we can present to her a Bible as well as her certificate.
Amen. St. Paul, I had the wonderful privilege of this morning baptizing this young, beautiful lady, 13 years old, who has confessed Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior. Mayla, we want to present to you a couple of things. First of all, when is your birthday? Her birthday is March 4th. Today is another birthday. So you need to tell your folks they need to get you a cake today as well. Amen. Today is your, is your spiritual birthday that you were baptized into the family of God uh, through baptism. And it's a very, very serious occasion. And so we have two things we want to present to you. First of all, a certificate of baptism. That's like a birth certificate. And then secondly, we want to present to you a Bible that is age appropriate for you to read. And we want you to get connected as far as one of our teaching ministries uh, is concerned so that you can continue to learn and grow and then whatever gifts and graces God has given you, we want to see you utilize that in the body of Christ. So this morning, it gives me the wonderful privilege to present to you your certificate and your own personal Bible. And thank you so much for becoming part of our family. We are brothers and sisters in Christ, and I'm looking forward to you growing with us and becoming all that God will have for you to be. St. Paul, can we celebrate Sister Mayla Hudson? You may return to your seat at this time. Amen, 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 amen. What a blessed privilege it is for us to be in the house of the Lord on this day, and this is something we don't want to take for granted. Um, uh, I am certainly delighted and elated for all of you who have been able to come and to share in this worship experience. And as we move forward, as far as this worship experience is concerned, I just want to first of all give a major shout out to the Mecklenburg County Detention Center. Uh, our social justice ministry has uh, established a partnership that's allowing for us to do a broadcast live to our brothers and sisters at the detention center. Uh, let's give God praise and let, let them hear you giving them claps, amen as far as uh, this morning's worship experience is concerned. As we applaud them, we're praying that when they are released, that they will uh, come back into society and be productive and we continue to lift them up in prayer. I want to just mention that we have two vacant positions on our board of directors here at the church and we are seeking individuals who have number one, been a full member here at St. Paul for at least three consecutive years. They are actively and consistently involved in a teaching ministry, which is either Sunday morning live or Bible study. And they're consistent tithers and givers as far as financial offerings are concerned. We hope that they, uh, if you're interested in applying, that you have a specialized knowledge or experience in relevant fields that would be of direct benefit to the board, legal, real estate, insurance, housing, uh, business, things of that sort. We sent out an email with the link to register on the church website last Sunday. We will send out another one today. Or you could go to the church website in the Help Wanted section under our resource tab and apply as far as the board is concerned. Just want to let you also know that our church office will be closed starting tomorrow, Monday the 16th through Friday, uh, to allow for the staff to have uh, a week sabbatical. Next Sunday, next Sunday is our homecoming Sunday. And things are going to be just a little different than what we have done in the past because of this pandemic. On next Sunday, we, will, of course, only have one service. 10 o'clock, we will have our annual homecoming service, our guest preacher, will be the Reverend Dr. Freddie James Clark of the Shalom Church City of Peace in St. Louis, Missouri. We're asking those who can to give a special seed offering of $100 as far as that's concerned. And then starting on next Monday night through Wednesday, August 23rd through 25th, we will have our annual church revival. And our revivalist will be the Reverend Dr. William H. Curtis, senior pastor of the Mount Area Baptist Church in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and the Reverend Dr. Jerry Carter, the senior pastor of Calvary Baptist Church in Morristown, New Jersey. You need to register if you would like to come. 
uh, for each night. We're going to follow the same health and safety protocols that are in place for you right now. And so we invite you to come and share with us. Our doors will open at 630 to receive you in the sanctuary. And at 7 o'clock, we will start our worship experience. Amen. So I'm looking forward to them coming and sharing with us. Also, I just want to mention that Lock Carey had its annual uh, convention last week. And the Lock Carey uh, Foreign Mission Society has made history. We have... Uh, as president, the first female president of a major black Baptist convention in America. My sister, the Reverend Dr. Gina Marcia Stewart, is our president. Let's give God praise for her. She has been here and preached at the St. Paul Church on several occasions during my tenure here. And uh, I'm looking forward to having her to come back and share with us in the preaching moment, especially under the title of being president of the Lot Carey Foreign Mission. Um, before I call for prayer, I want to, at this time, uh, just say something that, that I've been kind of hitting around at, but I really want to hit it hard today. If you are not vaccinated, you need to get vaccinated. Let, let me say that again. If you are not vaccinated, you need to get vaccinated. Now, I know I'm a pastor, and I know I'm supposed to have compassion, and I know I'm supposed to have care, and I know I'm supposed to have concern, but I am having compassion fatigue right now for folks who don't want to wear a mask and who don't want to get vaccinated. Let me say that again. I'm having compassion fatigue. What is compassion fatigue? I'm tired of looking at folks who don't want to get vaccinated and who don't want to wear a mask. Um, and, 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 and let me just say because um, Many people have made this a political war. Many people have made this a partisan issue. Many people have made this even a racial issue. But, but it's not. Um, at my home state, the hospital system has failed. In the state of Mississippi, the entire state hospital system has failed. They say it's going to fail. I'm saying it has failed. It has failed. Now, as quiet as it's kept here in North Carolina, ours ain't too far behind. Um, they are diverting people that if you have to go to one hospital, they ain't got beds. And so they'll send you somewhere else. The only reason that we are even here right now in worship, and if you saw the news uh, article, I mean the news segment they did on us last week, I said the only game changer between last year and this year is what? The vaccine. People that are getting sick, people that are dying, over 95% of them are unvaccinated. 95% of the people who are contracting the Delta variant and are getting placed in the hospitals and are dying are unvaccinated. Now, I'll be the first to admit, the vaccination does not stop you from getting COVID. You can contract the Delta variant and still be vaccinated. However, if you are vaccinated, your chances of surviving goes up exponentially. If you are vaccinated, nine times out of 10, you won't wind up in the ICU or on a ventilator or intubated if you're vaccinated. Now, I know in the past I haven't hit this hard, but I'm hitting it hard today because if this thing don't change, we ain't doing this no more. Y'all think I'm lying. We, we ain't doing this no more. Um, we're not. So, so you got to get vaccinated. A good friend of mine in Atlanta, Georgia, 
uh, Dr. William Flippin at the Greater Piney Grove Baptist Church last week said, and God knows I would love to do it here, but a whole lot of folks will have a hissy fit. If you ain't vaccinated, you can't come to church. And he making folks show cards. Okay? Um, um, but, but listen, time out for playing, time out for you talking about, well, duh, I need to see what the results are. Listen, they have been working on this vaccine since 2000 because COVID ain't nothing but a SARS infection. And they've been working on this since 2000. Now, let me share one more thing with you all because I was talking to one of my mentors who was talking to some people from John Hopkins University. And let me tell you really what the deal is and why we are where we are, okay? The vaccine does not attack the heart of the virus. The vaccine only attacks those spikes. Y'all been seeing those little balls with spikes? It only attacks those spikes so that it won't impact you, all right? With each mutation, the arrangements of the spikes change. And since the arrangement of the spikes change, that means sooner or later they're going to have to come up with a new vaccine. Now, the only reason why the vaccine does not attack the heart of the virus is because it has yet to be developed. Okay? So we have what I call treatment of the vaccine, but Sooner or later, they're going to have to come up with booster shots so that they can deal with this. Now, I say this and I'm done. If you don't get vaccinated, sooner or later, it's going to cost you. And you can mark my word, I'm being prophetic right now. And if you don't believe me, if you have insurance, I bet you sooner or later, the insurance company is going to say, just like if you smoke, that if you are not vaccinated, your premiums are going to go up. I I'm telling you, it's coming down the pipe. You, you mark my word. You can say, Pastor told us this. Sooner or later, if this thing don't turn around, I guarantee that insurance companies, if you have insurance, are going to ask if you're vaccinated. And if you're not, your premium is going to go up. It's going to go up. So that is my public health service announcement. Um, um, it's, it's, either, it's, either, it's either get vaccinated or get put on the ventilator. Because this thing is not playing. And I like seeing y'all in church. And y'all here because y'all like what? Coming to church. But, 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 but if the numbers continue to, 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 to get out of whack and we see stuff happening in schools and the government says you need to do ABC, guess what? We, we, we're going to go back to doing virtual. Um, so we're going to do this as long as we can. But please, ma'am, please, sir, know that uh, if it gets, gets, gets too wild, we'll, we'll just go back to doing what, what, what we have been doing until times get better. Um, um, yeah, so I'm, I'm done with that. Um, we're getting ready for prayer, and as we get ready to go to the Lord in prayer, I, I want us to um, lift up Reverend James Burney. His stepfather died last week, and those services are being held today at Don Brown Funeral Home in Aden, North Carolina. Even as I speak, they're making preparation to celebrate uh, his life. We also want to lift up Sister Ida Dunstan, uh, our brother Philip Dunstan, made his transition uh, last week. The memorial service is going to be this Saturday uh, here at the church at 11 o'clock. It will be a memorial service. Then we also want to lift up um, Thomas Falls family. Uh, his services were here yesterday uh, at the church, and he's definitely going to be missed. We want to lift up the country Haiti, uh, they have uh, suffered a 7.2 um, earthquake. Uh, and last count that I read yesterday, over 300 people have died 
and the count is going to go up. And so uh, I know that Lot Carey will probably be doing something there, so maybe real soon we'll be asked to send something. We want to lift up Sister Sherry McLennan, Gina Pettis-Dean, Eleonora Lee, Robert Lunn, Anthony Farr, Reverend Siobhan McElwain, Francis Montgomery, our uh, predecessor, Dr. Paul Drummond, and his wife, Sister Thomasina Drummond. We want to continue to lift them up in prayer. We want to lift up even the country of Afghanistan um, that is um, uh, falling back to the Taliban regime. Um, I know I should not say this, but I am. The United States made a mess over there. And um, Afghanistan is this current Vietnam. So we want to lift that country up in prayer. I'm going to ask that Minister Eric Edwards will come and take us to the throne of grace, and then we'll move forward with the rest of the worship experience. Let's go to God in prayer. God, we come before you this morning just to say thank you. Thank you, God, for not being the God of a second or third chance, but God, thank you for being the God of another chance. The God who's allowed for us to gather yet again. The God who's allowed for us to see another day, although we don't deserve it. God, we just say thank you. We say thank you for your son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, this morning. Jesus, thank you for your wonderful sacrifice. We are so thankful that you died for us to set us free and to save us. Jesus, thank you for your love that you showed for us on Calvary. Thank you for your sacrifice. And God, we come before you this morning just calling on your comfort, God. Because so much is going on in this world. God, we ask that you comfort those in Haiti, God. Send your spirit over there, God, to be with those people as you have people over there losing loved ones, people dying because of a natural disaster. God, they need you right now. So, God, send your power, send your Holy Spirit, and wrap your loving arms around those people. And, God, be with those in Afghanistan who are facing violence, God, facing death fear and persecution God be with them and help them as the days go by and God we need you in our personal lives because so much is happening in our life that God we need you to take off of our shoulders God we need you to change some things in our lives so God we turn it all over to you right now God make our situation better and God I just pray also that you be with those who pastor called God as they're losing loved ones those with health issues God comfort them God be with them Father God and let them know that you have all the power and that you are right there with them God we need more of your love today we ask that God you send your spirit of wisdom to those who are hesitant to get vaccinated God we want to be safe so God send your spirit of wisdom to let them know that this thing is serious that is nothing to play with, that God, we need to survive. So God, we're calling on you to just act in the world that's so desperate for your presence. God, we ask that you help us to be better Christians, better disciples, God. Help us to be what you desire for us to be. Help us to be those servants that you've called for us to be because we know that we're missing the mark. We know that we're falling short and God, we just ask you to Help us right now, God. Help us to go out and to do your will. Help us to go out and to show your love and to be the Christians that you want us to be, the followers that you want us to be. And lastly, we ask that you forgive us of all our sins. God, for we've fallen short of your glory. We've missed the mark, and God, we gotta admit that we messed up. So many times that we make you angry, so many times that we hurt you, so many times that we go against your word, and we're sorry, God. All we can ask is that you forgive us and that you make us better, make us obedient, help us to truly follow you. We love you and we thank you. It is in your son, our Savior name that we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you believe that God is answering your prayer, can you give God praise? at this time amen 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 brothers and sisters it's time to give 
It's time to give. Go ahead and give God praise, a preemptive praise. Amen. It's time to give. Here at the St. Paul Church, there are three ways that you can give. Those that are watching us online, as well as those that are in the house, three ways that you, well, really four ways that you can give. Now, the first one is by mailing your check or money order to the church at 1401 Allen Street, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28205. Or if you desire to drop off cash, check, or money order, or cashier's check, you could drop that off here at the church. Call the church office at 704-334-5309 to make sure someone is here to receive your offering um, and verify that someone is in the office. The second way you can give is by going to our website uh, through ACS or Church Life and giving there electronically. Uh, the other way you can give is through the app called Givelify. If you have that um, a smart device, you can download it to your smart device. Search for St. Paul Baptist Church, Charlotte, North Carolina. You ought to see this sanctuary. Um, and in three clicks, you can give. If you're in the house right now, you have a physical offering. You have a physical offering. On the seat in front of you, there is a basket. All you just got to do is drop your offering in that basket after we pray, and our team will receive or uh, come and pick up those offerings. You do not have to touch the basket. Just drop your offering in that basket. Amen? So if you would, uh, however you're giving right now online, if you're watching us online, if you're in the house, would you hold up your offering at this time? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. God, we come and we thank you for the wonderful, blessed opportunity to partner with you through giving. And Lord, right now we give, not grudgingly or out of necessity, but cheerfully because you love the cheerful giver. Lord, if you would, take these gifts of ours, bless them in a god way. For those that are carrying out the discipline of giving tithes and offerings, your word has a promise attached to it. For those that are growing in their faith when it comes to giving, stretch them. And then, God, for even those who feel like they don't have to give, God, we pray you will convict them. Take these gifts, use it as far as your work, worship, word, and witness through the tribe of the St. Paul Church. In Jesus' name, the greatest giver we have, we pray, amen. If you would, go ahead. If you uh, see a basket in front of you, if you would, just drop it in that basket, amen. And our choir will bless us with the Samonic Selection.
even in our trials, even in our tribulations, you reign, Father. It might hurt sometimes, but you reign, Father. We might miss somebody, Father, but you reign. We may have lost jobs. We might have lost family members. We might have lost our strength. But Father, you reign. I lift my hands to you. My heart to you. I surrender my life. If you believe the God we serve is a reigning God and a supreme God, can you celebrate that God right now? I need some folks in the house who don't mind celebrating the God who reigns forever and forever. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Lord, you reign. Come on, let's celebrate and let's give God the praise he so richly and rightfully deserves. One, two, this morning. Uh, call your attention to Psalm 92, Psalm 92. I don't like that sound. Psalm 92. Um, and I will read it in its entirety, Psalm 92. As we continue the series of sermons dealing with victorious living, um, these words are printed in the New King James Version of the Word of God. It is good to give thanks to the Lord and sing praises to your name, O Most High, to declare your loving kindness in the morning and your faithfulness every night. On an instrument of ten strings, on the lute and on the harp with harmonious sounds. For you, Lord, have made me glad through your work. I will triumph in the works of your hands. O oh Lord, how great are your works. Your thoughts are very deep. A senseless man does not know, nor does a fool understand this. When the wicked spring up like grass, and when all the workers of iniquity flourish, it is that they may be destroyed forever. That's good right there. But you, Lord, are on high forevermore. For behold, your enemies, O Lord, for behold, your enemies shall perish. All the workers of iniquity shall be scattered. This is where I want to drop my anchor. But my horn you have exalted like a wild ox. I have been anointed with fresh oil. My eye also has seen my desire on my enemies. My ears hear my desire on the wicked who rise up against me. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall bear fruit in old age. They shall be fresh and flourishing. 
to declare that the Lord is upright. He is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in him. Amen. I want to preach for the time that is mine. God wants to show you off. God wants to show you off. There is a saying that character is who we are in private. If this is the case, then the public square is where we are a reflection of the quality time with God, which forms and forges our destiny, purpose, and life in such a manner as to bring God glory and honor. I know it may sound strange, but I need to let somebody know that God takes wonderful delight in seeing God's people overcome obstacles, triumph over tragedies, defeat demons, press against persecution, hurdle over hurts, and win against the wicked. Yet the problem in these situations is the preparation work for what God wants to do is often done behind the scenes. But God displays it in the public. Which means that you and I must never be afraid nor ashamed to demonstrate affection and adoration to God and for God in the public square. Jesus said in Matthew 5, 16, let your light so shine before men and women that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. One of the problems with the people of God in 2021 is our hesitancy and reluctance to let God be seen in our lives in the public square. We don't want folks to know that we know who Jesus is on the job or at school or at the mall or even in the church. I'm, I'm not talking about you coming to St. Paul or clicking on virtual church and putting on your church face with a holier-than-thou attitude. But I'm talking about becoming the person that God creates in the secret place. And, and, and when you review the holy word of God, most of the people that we lift up as biblical models, more time was spent in obscure preparation. But when it came to the public square, their lives demonstrated a power and a richness which brought God glory. When you survey the holy word of God, you will see that Noah spent 120 years in obscurity preaching the same sermon is going to rain, building an ark, and that only lasts for 40 days. N Moses spent 80 cumulative years in Egyptian courts and on the backside of the Midian desert but he only spent 40 years leading the nation of Israel in the wilderness. Elijah spent three years in obscurity, hanging out with a raven and a widow, but he only spent one day defeating 450 of Baal's prophets on Mount Carmel. And then there's Jesus, who spent 18 years in the carpenter shop after he was found in the temple but only three years in public ministry before he was crucified on a cross. One of the greatest opportunities that any person professing and proclaiming to be a disciple of Jesus Christ is to show how good the Lord has been to you, especially in public. When you've had an opportunity to stand before those who have counted you out, dogged you out, cussed you out, who wanted to see you fall, who wanted to celebrate your failures and criticize your success and show them how God sustained you even in the midst of their wickedness and evil schemes, you better not shy away from letting somebody know how good the Lord has been. 
In other words, God is preparing you in the secret place so that God can show you off in the public space and so that God will be exalted among the people. Somebody needs to be reminded about the time you spend in prayer and studying the word of God and obscurity and meditation and fasting. That, that's not in vain. There's a purpose behind all of that. Uh, you need to know that your time seeking God's face and understanding God's ways and thanking God is not for naught. This is what this psalm is all about because the covenant God has established in private is about to come to fruition in public. You can't keep a private demeanor when you know it has been nobody but God who has done things for you you could not do for yourself. So, so when you come to the recognition about all that God has done for you, sooner or later, there must be a public demonstration of private expectations. To those that are watching me online right now, you know that there must be a public display of character development, spiritual maturity, life transformation, and soul improvement which others around you thought would never take place. In other words, God wants to show you off. This 92nd Psalm is focused on the worship of the sovereign God on the Sabbath. The writer of this wonderful song lifts the fact how God deserves our praise and adoration not only in private, but more so in public. As people of God, we cannot ever be afraid to let others know about the impact God has on our lives. God is liberating, developing, transforming, and emancipating us, forging us and shaping us in God's image and likeness so that we will look more like Jesus rather than a replication of the devil. God has created. God is creating. God will create us for the purpose of becoming agents of positive change in public places. God did not save you online. God did not save you in the sanctuary just to shout or engage in a ministry. God has saved us to make us better, not bitter. God has saved us to make us joyful, not jilted. God has saved us to become a testimony, not a tragedy. God has saved us to become agents of positive change, not people of mediocrity. God is moving you and me to a place of spiritual maturity and personal improvement that will give us vitality, vibrancy, and vim as we function in a broken and sinful world. In this world, we are confronted with challenges, confusions, and choices. In this world, we have to deal with dilemmas, defeats, and devils. In this world, we must face fears, frustration, and foolishness. In, in this world, we got to handle headaches, heartaches, and heaviness. However, this must be done from the posture and the position in the public square to show family, friends, associates, co-workers, church folks, classmates, Facebook friends, TikTok buddies, Twitter followers, Instagram lookers, and even your enemies, how a relationship with God, how your faith in Jesus Christ, how being empowered by the Holy Ghost will change you for the better. In other words, all I'm trying to say to those that are watching me on Zoom and Facebook Live and YouTube, all God wants to do is make a difference in your life that will be seen by somebody else that will be able to empower you to say that if God could do it for me, he certainly can do it for you. 
You and I need to become more aware of God's presence, better acquainted with Christ's love, and Holy Ghost empowered to make the kingdom of God a working reality. What does the kingdom of God look like? This is what the kingdom looks like. The kingdom of God is when lions lay down with lambs. Swords are turned into plowshares. Spears are turned into pruning hooks. And we study war no more. The kingdom of God looks like people from various socioeconomic and ethnic backgrounds coming together in worship and service to God and humanity. The kingdom of God looks like people who are concerned about ecological justice when it comes to global warming, climate change, toxic waste dumping in black and brown neighborhoods, and engaging in serious recycling efforts. The kingdom of God look like people who are concerned about viable education in the public school system, a health care system that is feasible for everybody, and a livable wage for the working poor. The kingdom of God looks like people who are concerned about their neighbor's well-being, especially when it comes to COVID-19, by at least wearing a mask, sooner or later getting vaccinated, washing your hands, practicing social distancing, and protesting tyrannical and ignorant governmental officials who downplayed this pandemic. The kingdom of God transcends physical space and connects, communicates, cooperates, and collaborates digitally, virtually, and digitally. There are those who can testify about the change that God has brought to your reality since Jesus saved you from your sins, picked you up out of the marrying clay, and gave you a new lease on life. That's why we can sing that song, What a Wonderful Change in My Life Has Been Wrought. Since Jesus came into my heart, I have light in my soul for which long I have sought since Jesus came into my heart. Now, I know that we're in the St. Paul Church and we're doing this physical church. And sometimes I don't know where I'm making a connection or not because I see folks online and I can't see the Facebook live crowd and I can't see the YouTube live crowd, but I see some folks in the house. But I just need to know if you're watching me online or in the house, is there anybody that ain't afraid to testify how Jesus has made a better change in your life? Is there anybody watching me on Zoom that ain't afraid to at least wave your hands at me and say you ain't the same person you were before Jesus came into your life? Can we have a little church right now? Can we just be honest right now? You are less angry. You are less mean. You are less hateful. You are less hellish. You are less scornful. You are less stupid. And you are less ignorant. You are more joyful. You are more peaceful. You are more loving. You are more kind, you are more giving, you are more forgiving, you are more gentle, you are more merciful, and you are more gracious. Is there anybody that ain't afraid to testify that had it not been for the Lord on my side, ain't no telling what type of person I would be right now. So I make my way to the Zoom, I make my way to Facebook Live, I make my way to YouTube, I make my way to the telephone, and I make my way to 1401 Allen Street to lift up holy hands and to show off in the public spaces how good the Lord has been. Who is God? Who is God trying to create to show off? <laughs> who, 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 who is God trying to create to show off in the public square? Uh, 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 I, I want to submit that when you look at collectively verses 1 through 4, God is creating persons who will worship God enthusiastically in the public square. When you, when you look at, when you look at, when you look at verses 1 through 4, this is the image we get. God wants people who will honor and respect their relationship with God by coming to worship 
doing the Sabbath. All right, all right, let me try that one more time because um, uh, y'all, y'all missed the shout. God is looking for folk who don't mind, watch this, being inconvenienced to come together in whatever manner you can to worship God on the Sabbath. Now, 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 now let me talk about the Sabbath uh, uh, because the Sabbath for the Jews was the last day of the week. It was the weekly observation of rest. It was a sign of covenant between Israel and God. That the Sabbath reminded Israel how God delivered them from Egypt. Because during the week, a lamb was sacrificed in the morning and in the evening. But on the Sabbath, which was their Saturday, the sacrifices were doubled. Worship. Here it is, is really a sign that God wants to hang out with you and me. God does not desire isolation, but intimacy so we can move to another level with God. That's why the psalmist says, uh, it is good to give thanks unto the Lord, to sing praises to your name and to declare your loving kindness and your faithfulness. Watch this, on the instrument with ten strings, on the loop, the heart, and the sound. Can I translate to y'all uh, y'all for what that is? Uh, in today's nomenclature, the psalmist will be saying, it is good for you to give thanks and sing praises to your Lord and to declare the loving kindness in the morning and God's faithfulness in the evening on the guitar, on the drums, on the trumpet, on the piano, on the organ, and everything that hath breath, praise ye the Lord. Now this is what the children of Israel had to do as a sign of their relationship with God. Now you and I are not Jews, but we are expected to join uh, the people of God in worship. Now, it looks a lot different now, doesn't it? Uh, we, we got some who are in the church uh, being cautious as we gather in these pandemic times. Uh, we got others who are part of our Zoom congregation. I see you with your video up. I see you with your picture up. We got others who are watching us on Facebook Live. I'm waving at y'all. Others who are watching us on the church website. I'm waving at y'all. Others who are watching us on YouTube. I'm waving at y'all. Others who are even listening to us on the telephone, I'm hollering at y'all. Uh, uh, so I want y'all to either interact with me with some comments or some emojis. Send something up to let me know I'm connecting with you. We got folks checking us out all over the world uh, and all over the country. Nevertheless, we chose at this moment to come together and to worship our God in public spaces. As, as believers, as believers, we can praise God for his awesome gifts, God's salvation through the blood of the Lamb, the covenant that was established with Jesus on a hill called Calvary. Therefore, y'all, worship is nothing more than the outflow of hearts that love our God and appreciate who God is and don't mind thanking God for what God has done in our lives. Is there anyone that ain't afraid to show God something? appreciation, not for what God has done. Ooh, here's your shout, but simply for who God is. I know we love to shout about what God has done. He woke me up this morning, started me on my way, gave me health, life, strength, blood, milk. We love to give God praise for the house we live in, the car we drive, the clothes that are on our back, but I need somebody that has moved beyond just thanking God for what he's done and giving God praise for who God is. Can I tell y'all can I tell you who God is? God is Jehovah Elohim, the Lord our God. God is Jehovah Rohi, the Lord our shepherd. God is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord our provider. God is Jehovah Nisi, the Lord our banner. God is Jehovah Rapha, the Lord our healer. I'm waiting for the rest of y'all to catch up because one of these names ought to hit your space. The Lord is Jehovah Shalom, the Lord our peace. God is Jehovah Sekinu, the Lord our righteousness. God is Jehovah Jehovah Selah, the Lord our rock. God is Jehovah El Elyon, the Lord most high. And God is Jehovah Shammah, the Lord is present. Those are just a few names of who God is. But if that's too technical for you, if that's too Hebraic for you, all you just need to do is just say,
say the name Jesus. That's the sweetest name for God I know. There's some other names I know we can call our God. Can I do a church check right now? Because that was too sophisticated for y'all. Anybody know that he's a doctor in a sick room? A lawyer in a courtroom, a friend for the friendless, a mother for the motherless, a father for the fatherless. Anybody know he's your redeemer? He's your savior. He's your healer. He's your deliverer. Is there anybody that ain't afraid to give God praise simply for who God is? I'm tired of us worshiping God in a utilitarian manner. I want somebody that ain't afraid to give God praise simply because of who God is. Yes. If I could push the envelope when it comes to worshiping God, for me, I can't worship God enough. It takes more than these 90 minutes we've set aside to do this corporate worship. But now, I've gotten y'all high, so let me drop you low. Because here's the problem with worship. Because too many of us treat God like God is an ugly date. Loaded with cash. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Don't look at me like that. Because some of y'all have done that. You treated, treated somebody... Uh, uh, like an ugly date, but they had a lot of money. Uh, he, he, here's what I'm trying to say. We don't mind hanging out with God in private, but we don't want nobody to know we love God in public. But I believe I got a few folks that ain't afraid to testify. I love God in private, and I'm going to show out about God in public because God's been too good God's been too kind, God's been too faithful, God's too be, been too generous for me to sit on my bootabus maximus and let others think and suspect what I know about God. The Bible says, let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. Let me, God, I got to hurry up and wrap this thing up. When you look at verses 5 through 11, you will see something else. You will see that God is trying to create people who will overcome obstacles brought on by wicked folk. That, that's in verses 5 through 11. Uh, uh, verse 5 through 11, the psalmist shifts attention to the enemies of God who will make life difficult for the people of God. Now, this is what you got to understand. If you don't get anything else, please get this. If somebody does not like God, they ain't going to like you. Uh, uh, if somebody is an enemy of God, they're your enemy too. Uh, and, and, and if they are an enemy of God, they're going to have issues with you. And if they have issues with you, then sooner or later they're going to create problems for you. So you have to understand wicked people have a purpose of creating obstacles because they have problems with God. Interestingly, God knows how to handle God's enemies because God is bigger than they are. So if God knows how to handle this, somebody, somebody going to want to take off and run on this. If God knows how to handle God's enemy. then don't you know God knows how to handle my enemy? Now, 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 now this is how the wicked are described in, in, in the King James Version. I like that translation. They're described as brutish, which means they are beastly, snakish, lack values, savage, living only to satisfy the flesh. Uh, other versions, the message translation says they're senseless, stupid, rude, uncultivated. Now, can, can I be honest, Zoom? Can I, can I be honest, YouTube, Facebook Live? Can I be honest, church? Uh, now, I, I try to avoid stupid. It's just me. I, I, I try to avoid 
senseless. I, I try to avoid rude. I, I try to avoid uncultivated folk because they just got too much drama. I'm, I'm trying to avoid drama. And, and, and unfortunately, all of us in here, if we're honest, and you can come take the mic right now, know some stupid, senseless, rude, and uncultivated people. I, I can deal, Peyton, with the homeless. I can deal with the hungry. I, I can deal with the thirsty. I, I can deal with the mentally challenged. I can deal with the uneducated. I can deal with the sick. I can deal with the disenfranchised. But I can't deal. This is just me, just your pastor. It's hard, St. Paul, for me to deal with stupid, senseless, rude, and uncultivated people. I, I got a new description for them. I call them stupid dumb. Stupid dumb. And guess what? God doesn't want to deal with those type of people. God's issue is not with sinners. God's issue is with stupid, senseless, rude, or uncultivated folk. I could call some names right now. And I bet you could call some names right now. But what excites me is knowing that one day the enemies of God will be defeated. And if the enemies of God will be defeated and scattered, then guess what? Your enemies will be defeated and scattered. Stupid people got to go. Senseless people got to go. Uncultivated people got to go. Rude people got to go. It is the fool who says there is no God. But the Bible says they are like grass. They grow all over the place, but they have no deep roots. They're going to fade with the changes of the season. But there is a sign that you and I will overcome that's distinguished by three things. God lets us know through the psalm how God is going to going to be exalted and how you and I are going to be lifted up and how the Lord is going to anoint our head with fresh oil and how he will destroy our enemies one day. So here's the deal. If folks are messing with you, getting on your reserve nerve, trying to take you down, trying to take you out, you need to learn how to put them in the hands of the Lord and leave them there. Do I have any man, woman, boy, girl that ain't afraid to test that God will fight your battle. God will make your enemy your footstool. God will handle your haters. Y'all put too much attention on your enemies and on the wicked and on the haters. You give them too much praise. But I have learned how to put certain folks in the hands of the Lord and I've seen God take care of some stuff for me a whole lot better than I ever could have. Let me, let me, let me get out of here because my time is about up. It is 1126. But, but can I finish this sermon? I, I, listen, I know I want to get y'all out of here by 1130, but, but can I finish this sermon? Can y'all give me at least another 10 minutes to finish this sermon? Because if, if I don't finish it, I'm going to leave you stuck on your enemies. But I want to let you know what God really want to do in your life. And here it is. God is creating a people who can flourish in the midst of frustration. Uh, verse 12 through 15, verse 12 through 15. Notice how the wicked are like grass, but the righteous are like trees, particularly two types of trees, the cedars of Lebanon and the palm tree. Now, now there's a difference through these trees because the palm tree and the cedars were highly valued by the people in that time the palm tree for its fruit the cedar of lebanon for its wood they were appreciated for their beauty and they could survive a long long time but there's a difference between the palm tree and the cedar of lebanon the cedars of lebanon is grown 
under the conditions of its natural inhabitant. It becomes hard and strong, tight grain, and it can take a high polish once it is cut down for furniture. It is full of resin, which keeps it from rotting and which keep the worms out. Uh, the psalmist says that the righteous is like the cedar of Lebanon because God has deposited something within us that will keep the worms out like jealousy and strife and wickedness. So I don't know, I'm perhaps talking to some cedars in here right now who have been able to stand against a whole lot of stuff that has come against you. But the other type of tree is known as the palm tree. The palm tree is found in sandy areas where there's not a lot of rain. The roots of the palm tree go deep. You'll see the palm trees on beaches. You'll see the palm trees in the desert. The palm trees have the capacity to endure storms. When the wind, particularly hurricane winds, start blowing, you'll see stuff being strewn all over the place. Uh, when hurricane winds blow, you will see oak trees being snapped in half, pine trees falling on buildings. But I have yet to ever see a palm tree rolling down the street. The palm tree does not break when the winds blow. But the palm tree basically bends when the wind blow. The palm tree just bends as the wind blows. And then when the storm is over, the palm tree returns to its original position like nothing ain't ever happened. This is what the righteous does when trouble comes. Uh, you don't break, but you just learn how to bend in the wind. Uh, you learn how to bend and not break. Am I talking to anybody in the house? They ain't afraid to testify when hell house came. You learn how to bend and not break. Uh, when bankruptcy came, you learn how to bend uh, and not break. When the divorce came, you learn how to bend uh, and not break. When sickness came, you learn how to bend uh, and not break. Uh, when your child act a fool, you learn how to bend and not break. When your spouse was stuck on stupid, you learn how to bend and not break. When prayers weren't answered the way you wanted them to be answered, anybody here learn how to bend? And, uh, and not break. Am I talking to any palm trees in the house right now? Uh, and after all you've been through, uh, when folks counted you out, uh, here comes the Lord standing you back up, propping you back up. Uh, you can stand the storms. Uh, you can stand tall and sturdy, uh, the trees. Uh, but here's the shout, y'all. Those palm trees uh, and those cedars of Lebanon uh, were transplanted uh, into the house of the Lord. Uh, Ooh, that's a good shout right there. The cedars of Lebanon and the palm trees were taken to the house of the Lord and situated in the house of the Lord because it is in the house of the Lord that they were able to bear fruit in their old age. It is in the house of the Lord that they remain fresh and green. It was in the house of the Lord that they were able to be productive. It is in the house of the Lord where the palm trees and the cedars of Lebanon said the Lord is upright God is my rock and there's no evil in my God am I talking to anybody in the house right now that ain't afraid to testify had it not been the Lord on your side you would have gone cuckoo for cocoa puffs a long time ago after all you've been through you're still alive after all you've been through you're still flourishing after all you've been through, you're still here. I'm waiting for you to stand up because I know I'm dropping it on your street. After all you've been through, you're still breathing. After all you've been through, you're still around. After all you've been through, you're still pressing your way. After all you've been through, you're still breast. After all you've been through, you still have your 
sanity. After all you've been through, you, you haven't lost your mind. After all you've been through, God has been good. And I just need to do a Zoom check. I need to do a Facebook check. I need to do a YouTube check. I need to do a Vimeo check. I need to do a sanctuary check. Is there anybody in the house that ain't afraid to give God praise because you know yeah, I said, you know, uh, had it not been for the Lord uh, blessing you, uh, ain't no telling where you would be right now. Uh, now, uh, that's acute praise. Uh, some of y'all are giving God uh, a Christmas morning praise. Uh, can I tell y'all how I was blessed almost about six years ago, six, seven years before I came to the St. Paul Church? Uh, uh, some of y'all see me driving my little green Lexus. Uh, that Lexus is a 2002 Lexus. It has 200 and 87,000 miles on it. I still take it to the shop. Why? Because it's paid for. I still drive it around. Why? Because it's paid for. I still run in it. Why? Because it still works. And I like my 2002 little Lexus. Yeah, I like it. But a few years ago, the Lord laid upon my wife's wonderful spirit, pure spirit, to get me a car. And, and when she took me to the dealership to show me the black Lexus, Lexus I drive. That's her doing it. And when I walked into that Lexus shop and it had a red bow on it and she said, well, baby, that's for you. Can I tell y'all what I did? I hollered and I shouted and I said, thank you, Lord. I didn't even say thank you, Peter. I said, thank you, Lord. Now, can I tell y'all the difference between a Christmas morning praise and a red bow tie praise? A Christmas morning praise is, oh, that's cute, but a red bow tie praise is, whoa, show enough. I need somebody right now that ain't afraid to give our God a red bow praise. If God can I preach it the way that I feel it? Hadn't done nothing for you. Sit down, shut your mouth, fold your arms, and cross your legs. But if you know it ain't nobody but God, I dare you to give God a praise. Let's go ahead and have church. Catch me in E flat. Tasha Cobb Leonard said, I'm going to put a praise on it. If you're on Zoom, if you're watching on Facebook Live, if you're on YouTube, if you're in the sanctuary, I dare you this morning to put a praise on it. And by talking to anybody in the house, they ain't afraid to give God praise. If God healed your body, Put a praise on it. If God wiped your tears, put a praise on it. If God delivered you, put a praise on it. If God fought your battles, put a praise on it. If God lift up a bow down head, put a praise on it. If God picked you up, turned you around, planted your feet on solid ground, put a praise on it. If God handed your enemies, put a praise on it. When you think about the goodness of God and all he's done for you, I double dog dare you, put a praise on it. Lift up your hands, throw back your head, open up your mouth and bless the Lord because he's good. He's good. He's good. He's good. He's good. And his mercy endure forever. Now through your mask. Now through the scream. Give God praise. Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Can I let my Mississippi come out? Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? If he's all right, give God praise. Uh, stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. I 
I want to take this. Oh, go ahead and give him praise. Go ahead and give him praise. Those who are connected to God, those who know God intimately can, can experience this. I, if you're watching us online, YouTube, Facebook, Vimeo, listening to us on the phone, I want to lead you in a short prayer, a prayer of new life, prayer of forgiveness, prayer of a brand new start. I want to lead you in a prayer. And as we pray this prayer together, it's a prayer of new life, prayer of a brand new start. If this prayer is meant for you, I want you to make a decision. I want you to make a decision. I want you to make a decision. Either to become a candidate for baptism, person be baptized, or to connect with us. I'll let you know how we're going to flow. But if you would just... Repeat this short prayer after me. God, I want to know you and your love. And I believe that it's best known when I know Jesus. I believe you sent Jesus to die for my sins. I believe he died on a cross. I believe he was raised from the dead. And I believe one day he's coming back. But until then, send your Holy Spirit into my life. Forgive me of my sins. Thank you for the gift of your salvation. In the name of Jesus, I pray this prayer. Amen. Hear me and hear me well. If you're watching us on Facebook or on our website, you just prayed that prayer. I want you to do me a favor. In the chat, type in salvation. When our digital ministers will reach out to you and let you know what the next steps are. If you are watching us on YouTube or listening to us on telephone, email us at connect at SPBC nc.org or call us at 704-334-5309 leave your name and a phone number and even though we're on the sabbatical by five o'clock tomorrow because we check our messages somebody will reach out to you and let you know what the next steps are if you want to be baptized if you're in the house right now and that sermon was meant for you if you're in the house right now you want to know who jesus christ is in the pardon of your sin, you prayed that prayer, you go like, I need the Lord in my life. If that's you right now, would you just do me this favor and just hold up your hand wherever you are? Hold up your hand. Hold up your hand. It ain't nothing to be ashamed of. Hold up your hand. If you're in the house right now and you want to know who Jesus Christ is, hold up your hand. 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 Amen. If you're here, if you're watching us again on Facebook or on our website and you're saying listen pastor i'm saved i know who jesus christ is but i would love to connect with saint paul it doesn't matter where you are in this country you can connect with us and join us virtually if you would type in connect in the chat when our digital ministers will reach out to you let you know what the next steps are if you're listening to us on youtube or on the telephone just email us at connect spbc.org or call the church office at 704-334-5309. Leave your name and your number. Someone will reach out to you and let you know what next steps are. If you're in the house, if you're in the house and you're saying, listen, I would love to connect with the tribe at St. Paul. I would love to be part of your fellowship. I would love to be your pastor. These men and women would love to be your brothers and sisters in Christ. If that is you and you're in the house right now, you don't have a church home or you're seeking, would you hold up your hand? I would love to be your pastor. 
if you got your hand up, if I could be your pastor, would you do me a favor? Would you just come on down just for a moment? Uh, and if you want to bring your friend, you could bring your friend as well. Do just walk with him. Come on, come on, come on. Uh, Marilyn, y'all know what to do. Come on down, come on down. Will there be another? Will there be another? Will there be another? For God's sake, raise the lights in this place. Will there be another right now? Will there be another? 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 If you're looking for a church home, I would love for you to roll with us. We'd love to have you to go with us. Will there be another? 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 Hey, whoever's working those lights back there, can y'all put the lights up? It's dark in here. Amen, 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 amen. And God said, let there be light. Hallelujah. All right. God bless you, my brother. God bless you. Thank you for your courage. Listen, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to let you roll with him since I saw y'all sitting together. Let you roll with him. I know you may not necessarily be joining him. Let you roll with him. Now, if you get convinced, we're going to praise the Lord for you, too. This is Deacon Marilyn White. She's going to take you to the gym. And they're going to get information from you and let you know what the next steps are. But, man, I am honored. And aren't we honored, St. Paul, to have you? So I'm going to do amen. If you would, follow her. St. Paul, can we give God praise? Can we give God praise? Amen. Those who are able, if you would, stand on your feet for the benediction. And now to him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless for the presence of his glory with all exceeding joy to the wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and forevermore. And the people of God said, amen. Do me a favor, take a seat. Our ushers will dismiss you from the floor first and then from the balcony, follow their directions. Continue to wash your hands, practice social distancing, um, uh, sanitize your hands, uh, get vaccinated, amen, get vaccinated. I love you, God loves you even more. You all please be safe, and if the Lord lays upon your heart, we'll see you next Sunday. God bless you.